Uh, my name is Andrea. Uh, my last name is Gehring, rhymes with sharing. Uh, you're welcome to call me Andrea. You're welcome to call me Dr. Gehring. Those are good. Um, my pronouns are she and her. And just a little bit about me. I graduated in 2010 with my bachelor's in engineering physics from the Colorado School of Mines, um, which is a small engineering college in Golden, Colorado, which is also home of Coors. Not a huge fan of Coors, but that's Golden's other claim to fame. Um, after that, I went to the University of Oregon where I got my PhD in physics in 2019 and promptly started at LCC in the fall of 2019, teaching physics and astronomy. Um, astronomy is my main focus. I love teaching astronomy, um, even though my background is in physics. So if you're um, the kind of person who has questions about physics and you wanna just chat about physics, I'm always happy to do so. All right, um, let's see, last year uh, was notable for the addition of these two kittens into my family and they're kind of rambunctious. So if you hear them in the background or if you see them zooming across the camera, uh, don't be surprised. This one on the right, that's Aiko and that's her sister, Ruby. So they will probably make an appearance of some kind at some point. And you're also welcome to have your cameras on I don't mind if there's pets or people walking around in the background or anything like that. Um, I find that it's a really nice atmosphere to have video on and be able to see your lovely faces and see some responses. But I totally understand, especially at 8 a.m., if you're like, I can't with the video. All right, so I'm good either way. Um, when you're in small groups with peers, I find that video is pretty nice to have on. Um, but again, it's always your choice. I want to tell you a little bit about my interests. I kind of mentioned this on the forum, I guess. Um, some of my hobbies. I like to run, hike, bike, ski, do yoga, basically anything that gets me moving or outside or preferably both. I'm a big fan of. Um, I like to cook and I like to garden and those things go together really nicely. Um, and I also am kind of a bookworm, I like to read books. I like to read the news every day and I listen to podcasts. Um, I listen to some science podcasts, but not a ton. Um, tend to listen to lots of economics podcasts just because I'm really interested in that topic. Probably would have been an economist if I didn't do physics. Anyway, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I want to just give you a little bit of Zoom etiquette before we dive further in. Um, you probably know all these things if you've been on any remote classes in the last year. Um, your name and pronouns, you can edit those by opening the participant tab, finding your name. You should be able to edit those, and if you can't, um, let me know. Um, for sound, I prefer that you remain on mute unless you want to speak up. Um, on the other hand, feel free to take yourself off mute and ask questions anytime. You can interrupt me. It's not a problem. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, if you don't want your voice to uh, be on the video, don't worry about it because that's what, part of what I do when I edit videos into small chunks is make sure that I'm editing out student voices. That way I can post them to YouTube uh, so it's easily accessible. Uh, and I don't want to post any student voices or video to YouTube, so I'm pretty careful about that. Um, if, you, if you do take yourself on mute and I don't hear you for whatever reason, you can always just raise your hand. Um, that's also, I think, under the participants tab, though maybe it moved to reactions if you have a newer version of Zoom. So you might have to hunt around, but you should be able to figure it out. Um, like I said, I like you to have video on especially during group activities, it just makes me feel like I'm actually part of a community and speaking to actual human beings. Um, so I have more fun. Hopefully if I'm having more fun, then you're having more fun. I don't know if that's really true, but let's go with it. You can also use reactions. Um, there's lots of fun ones. You can react with any emoji now, I think, in the latest version of Zoom. So that could be uh, good fun. So enjoy that. And then uh, if you don't know how to screen share, there's a little green button that might be helpful if you're doing group activities, especially when we do um, lab activities that are a little more involved and might involve looking at data together. Uh, it could be helpful to make sure you're looking at the same thing. So feel free to do that. Uh, make sure you're sharing just the window that you wanna be sharing. You know, Don't accidentally share your whole email or whatever. And um, use the chat for whatever you want. You can type in questions if you don't feel like um, interrupting me or coming off mute. Uh, you can just drop comments. You can uh, do whatever you want with the chat. Okay, um, these are some symbols that you might see as we go through lectures. Um, I try to include symbols on the upper left-hand corner when there's something going on. 
that you need to be part of. Uh, I mean, not that you shouldn't be part of the lecture the whole time, right? Um, but in particular, uh, you'll see this kind of symbol of uh, putting your heads together when we have a group discussion. That means I'm gonna pop you out into a breakout room. So if you see that symbol, like mentally prepare for being ready for that breakout room, read the question, you know, be ready to participate with your friends. Um, multiple choice questions are kind of the same thing. I'll usually ask you to vote on a question once, and then uh, depending on, you know, if everyone gets it right, we'll move on. If there's disagreement, then I'll have you pop into breakout rooms, discuss with each other, and then we'll vote again. So this is just a nice way to kind of build your knowledge together and different people understand different topics differently. So it can be helpful to talk through um, some of the muddier points of class. The other one that'll probably come up at least once per class is the symbol for doing activities or labs. So there will generally be one activity per class session, um, but sometimes there will be two if they're shorter activities. Um, so that's the symbol for that. And then this is the symbol that I use for um, asking you questions in the chat. So this is your guide to those. Um, you're all part of a class community now. So welcome to your class community. Um, I'm a part of the community as well. And I have a few kind of ground rules or guidelines. Um, we're all different individuals, right? We're all coming from different backgrounds, different perspectives. So we all view the universe through a slightly different lens. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually very productive because it means that we all have different ideas, um, background experiences to bring to the table. Um, on the other hand, we also have unique strengths and unique challenges, right? So I ask that you make sure to nurture a safe and welcoming class environment for everyone. So that means, you know, treat everyone with respect. And um, there's more in the syllabus about this. I do reserve the right to remove individuals from class if you are uh, contributing to a hostile environment. But I don't want to be punitive about this. I don't want to punish anyone. I want to make sure that everyone can move forward productively. So we'll talk about it if any problems emerge. I've never had any problems emerge. So hopefully that just keeps on keeping on. I also ask that you be patient, not only with other students, right? If we're in breakout room, maybe you're thinking, dang, this person should have gotten this idea by now. You know what? Be patient. Different people learn different ideas at different um, paces, and that's totally fine. And also be patient with yourself, right? It takes time for us to digest new ideas and really incorporate them and get good at using them, right? So be patient with yourself. It takes time for your mind to change. Um, and I also want you to believe, believe in each other, um, root for each other. Uh, this is, you know, one more year marked by the COVID pa pandemic. Um, this is a very challenging time to uh, work and live and learn. And so I hope that you, you know, make sure that you're doing the, the best that you can as you start to get other people, you know, check in on them. If you see them missing from class and they're always around, you know, it, it can't hurt to shoot folks an email and say, oh, I didn't see you on Monday. What's going on? Are you okay? Uh, and I will do that for you as well. So if you don't show up to class and you don't let me know what's going on, um, I might assume that you might need some help. Um, so don't be surprised if I get in touch. So I want to get to know you a little bit. So this is an example of a chat question. Um, the question is, what's your favorite object in space? And the way the chat questions work is I'll give you a minute. I'll be quiet for a minute and let you think about your response. Type it into the chat, but don't hit enter yet. And I'll tell you when to hit enter. Awesome. So um, based on your answers, I can see that some of you already know some things about astronomy, right? You're not coming in totally cold, right? Um, we all know that there's stuff out there in space, right? Um, the amount that you know about astronomy might be different. The specific things you know about might be different. And so we're gonna to work together in this class to build a solid um, under shared understanding of our solar system. All right, so some of the other topics that came up, galaxies, planetary nebula, uh, quasars, things like that. Those are topics that we cover in astronomy 122 and 123. This is a three term or yeah, three term sequence. You can take the classes in any order. So we might not talk about your favorite object in space in this class, but um, I promise it'll come up at some point in the sequence if you decide to take all three. 
All right, so that's um, pretty much a good segue into what we're gonna learn in this class. This is 121 solar system astronomy. So obviously we're gonna talk about the solar system. Um, we're not gonna talk about the sun in any great detail. Um, we'll save that for the 122 stellar astronomy, uh, but we are going to talk about all of the planets and some of these names that you might be less familiar with, Ceres, um, Haumea, Makemake, some of the dwarf planets in our solar system, as well as the asteroids in the asteroid belt, um, objects out far beyond the reach of Neptune in the Kuiper belt, and the uh, comets that live far, far out in the Oort cloud. So that's if you don't understand all those words yet, don't worry about it. We're going to get there all in due time. Um, we're also going to talk about not just the objects, right, the planets, um, but also how they formed. And uh, along with that goes into how the entire solar system formed. And because we have uh, the ability to actually see planets that orbit around stars other than the sun, we will also talk about other planetary systems, uh, what we're learning about them and how they can help us understand our own solar systems formation process. So uh, it's exciting stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. Hope you are too. Um, a little bit about the how, um, all this stuff is in the syllabus. So uh, I'm gonna try to just scream through this so we have plenty of time for actual astronomy today. Um, but this is a graphic I really like called the study cycle. Um, a lot of instructors plan their classes to take advantage of this study cycle. If you wanna learn how to use it for, well, studying, you can follow this link in the slides. Um, but essentially, you always start out by previewing the topic before you come to class. So there is reading and videos that are posted. Actually, all of them for the whole term are currently posted. Uh, they're also on the class schedule. And there'll be a pre-class quiz uh, that is, well, it's supposed to be due just before class. And uh, there's always going to be, except for today, a free response question on that pre-class quiz. Uh, any thoughtful response, I will give you full credit for. And the intention of that question is just to let me see how you're thinking and give you a chance to start to articulate some of your thoughts about the day's topics. Um, I'll also try to pull out some of the um, you know, selected quotes that I find in the pre-class quiz, um, anonymously, of course, because uh, sometimes that can be interesting for other students to see how folks are thinking. All right, in class, uh, like I said, there'll be activities, there'll be interactive lecture, and make sure to ask tons of questions um, during lectures. After lectures, um, there will be homework that's due on Sundays at midnight. All of the sort of weekly tasks are due Sundays at midnight. Um, I guess I'm not a huge fan of putting deadlines Sundays at midnight because I don't want to encourage you to do all do stuff like late at night on a Sunday. That's terrible. Um, but it works well for uh, just kind of there has to be a boundary sometime, right? So. I encourage you obviously to do all that work before Sunday at midnight, um, especially because that way you can ask me questions. I'm gonna have office hours probably on Thursdays. So if you at least look over the homework, maybe on Wednesday or maybe even at the beginning of the week to kind of see what you're um, expected to be able to do after classes, then you can come to office hours with your questions about the homework. You're welcome to work on homework with each other and Doing so in office hours is a good way to do it. I can put you in breakout rooms in Zoom if you come and wanna do some homework with a friend. Um, there'll also be some forum posts. I'll use these mostly to get you writing about the lab activities, um, but sometimes there'll be other things too. Um, for studying, I do have a study guide prepared. Uh, this is linked on Moodle, but I'll toss it into the chat here. And uh, the study guide I will update each week will have its own study guide. Uh, a lot of students like to use those to help guide their reading. So you'll like read the study guide questions before you do the reading, uh, but you can also use it as a review tool. So whatever works for you. And then of course you'll check your knowledge at the end. There will be quizzes every two weeks covering about the previous two weeks of material. So you'll have a regular uh, way to check your understanding. And then of course the final check will be the final exam. So any questions about this stuff? Kind of why the class is laid out the way it is. All right, um, it's not all about content in this class. There's also skills that I hope you walk away with. Um, I want you to nurture your curiosity first and foremost. One of our course learning goals is about asking questions to guide your learning. 
And so that means that you have to be curious. Um, that's where questions come from, right? Um, so I want you to ask those questions all the time. Uh, I have an open forum on Moodle now. I just added it yesterday. Uh, so you can use that as a Q&A. You can use it to chat with each other, form study groups. Uh, so if there's questions that you think of that don't come up during class time, that's a good place to store them. Um, and I'll try to keep an eye on that forum uh, once a day. I also want you to learn from failure and feedback. So you'll have um, multiple chances to do some things such as projects. Um, you'll have chances to fail on new concepts in the homework. Uh, which are lower stakes than the quizzes and exams. And I will give you feedback all along the way. Um, for activities, I'm gonna give a more generalized feedback, probably won't go through and individually give you responses on every question, that's too much. Um, but I will give you individual feedback on homework. So um, keep an eye on those. Uh, Moodle has some cool tools where I can give a general feedback if lots of people have a hard time with a particular homework question, for example, I'll make sure to note that in the general and overall feedback. Um, so make sure that you're reviewing those. I don't know when you that would be best for you to do, um, but schedule some time to review graded homeworks. I'll probably do most of my grading on Mondays and Tuesdays since stuff is due on Sundays. So that gives you a chance to review maybe on Wednesdays and come back with your follow-up questions on Thursdays and office hours. Okay, so those are some sort of soft skills, I guess, right? Um, but we're also gonna practice some hard skills um, you'll be able to make and analyze arguments based on evidence and logic. That's, you know, part of what science is all about, and astronomy is no exception. And um, I also want you to be able to identify connections between science and society. Science isn't just some sort of thing that happens disconnected from everything else in the world. Um, we're part of a global society, and science is a global enterprise. So uh, we'll do projects that help you identify those links. And not only between modern society, but also between um, societies of past, right? History. So there's a, a lot of links between astronomy and history and between astronomy and culture. And we'll talk about all those links. Some of the harder skills that are not here, um, our labs will work with data. Uh, you'll learn how to use spreadsheets and you'll get a lot of practice looking at graphs, analyzing graphs. Uh, so those are the hard skills. All right, um, I think this is it for syllabus stuff. Um, as for the graded activities that I talked about a couple slides back, um, about half of it is basically what I would consider as practice. So the pre-class questions, activities, homeworks, and forums, that's all practice. And um, the other half of your grade comes from assessments, right? So the final exam is about 15%, quizzes, there's five of them. Um, those will be 15% and the projects will be 21%. 20% project, 1% is a reflection um, at the very end on the entire project portfolio. So I feel that this is a fairly fair breakdown. Um, and I guess the one thing I would say about graded activities is some items in every category will be dropped because I know that things come up and you might not have a chance to make up everything that you might miss. Um, so check out the syllabus for all of those details. All right, our astronomy textbook is free and it's online. If you wanna print it, then there are different ways that you can obtain printed versions. Those are listed on their website. So make sure to check those out. <laughs>